So we often start you off in organic chemistry giving you pKa values for acids and having you compare them based on pKa's. But much more commonly you'll find out we'll be doing what's called a qualitative comparison. So rather than having any numbers, any pKa values in this case to compare them, we're going to compare their acidities qualitatively, just relative, which one's more acidic, which one's less acidic kind of a thing. Uh, and there's some rules we're going to kind of go through to do that instead of having pKa values supplied. But one thing we just said a little bit ago is that the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. So it always works that way and vice versa. Uh, but a couple new important things here is that a more stable base is a weaker base. And if it's a weaker base, due to the first thing we just mentioned, it has a stronger conjugate acid. So we'll find out that ranking acids is not always the easiest thing, but we usually rank acids by looking at their conjugate bases. And whichever acid has a weaker, more stable conjugate base will be the stronger acid in any comparison. Uh, one last thing to note here is that a more stable base generally has lower energy electrons. So this is super, 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 super important. I can't emphasize this enough. This is one of the big understanding points in all of organic chemistry. If you can understand that uh, lower energy electrons makes a base more stable, so and higher energy higher energy electrons and make a base more reactive, less stable. This will help you understand some, some serious trends in organic chemistry reactivity. This will be super important in a couple chapters. Uh, but for now, uh, we're going to use it just to kind of rank acids and stuff like that. But this is really the foundation for chemical reactivity in organic chemistry. I can't emphasize how important this is. You really want to absorb the information in this chapter uh, as kind of the foundation for a lot of chemical reactivity trends later on in both semester one and semester two. So if we take a look at an acid now here, so HA, dissociating of H plus and A minus is again that conjugate base. And the more stable it is, uh, the weaker it is as a conjugate base, but that means the stronger acid. So going back down here again, we've got this bronsted acid base reaction. If you recall, we said a carboxylic acid had a pKa in the four to five range. So an alcohol on this side had a pKa in the 16 range. And in this case, the weaker acid is on the right, the higher pKa. And so the equilibrium is going to lie towards the right. Now, we could look at that a different perspective here. We could look at these bases here. So and in this case, we'll find out that uh, just like that's the weaker acid, this is the weaker base. And we're about to learn that it'll end up being due to resonance, delocalization of this negative charge over both oxygens. That's what actually makes him more stable, lowers the energy of his electrons, and that makes him weaker. So, and this is not some, kind of something we do willy-nilly. We've got a set of rules that we typically follow. We follow them in order to kind of look at this and stuff like that. But rather than using pKa's, we're often going to kind of assay the bases based on the energy of their electrons. And the more stable base has the lower energy electrons, and the more stable base is the weaker base. Let's take a look. So now we're going to look at a series of factors that affect the stability of the conjugate base. And the first one we're going to take a look at is charge. And I just kind of want to get it out of the way. Most of the time, you'll be comparing bases that all have the same charge, and this won't be a rule you ever think about and stuff like that. But I do want to point out that it actually does have an impact. So it turns out when you have a negative charge, that raises the energy of your electrons, making them more reactive, less stable, i.e. a stronger base. On the flip side, therefore, a positive charge actually lowers the energy of the electrons on that atom, making them more stable, less reactive as a base, a weaker base. So charge does play a role, but most of the time, we'll simply be comparing bases that all have the same charge. So we've got a little mnemonic, and that mnemonic is ARIO here. So in this, we use to kind of list out those factors that affect the stability of the conjugate base. And we list them in descending order of importance. So we start with the most, generally the most important factors affecting the stability of the conjugate base, down to the least. So an A here stands for atom. That's the atom that's acting as the base. So the second thing we look at after looking for the atom with, that's acting as the base is to see if it's resonance stabilized. And after that, we'll see if it, try to see if it's stabilized by what's called induction. We'll talk about that more. So and then last but not least, we'll look at the orbitals. So oftentimes, if the we have the same basic atom, but it has a different hybridization, sp2, sp, sp3, that kind of thing, uh, that'll play a role on the stability of the electrons and how strong a base it is and things of this sort. Uh, so let's kind of look at each of these rules. And again, we generally follow these rules 
in order of importance. So the first rule you look at in comparing bases is the atom rule. So if there's no difference there, you move on to the resonance rule. If there's no difference there, you move on to the induction rule. And if there's no difference there, you move on to the orbitals rule. But you only keep going down the chain as long as you keep not having a difference. Once you find a difference with the most important rule where there's a difference, that's generally going to be the one that determines who's the stronger base, who's the weaker base. So let's take a closer look at this atom rule. So in the atom rule, it's two parts. It talks about the larger and or more electronegative the atom acting as the base, the more stable it is. Uh, and so I've listed these in order of importance. The size is the most important thing. So it turns out as you go smaller and smaller in size in the same group, in the same column on the periodic table, you get to be a stronger and stronger base. And the idea is that it'll form a shorter and shorter bond to hydrogen, which is a, sh a stronger bond. Uh, which would be a weaker conjugate acid. So the smaller base is the stronger base. So the idea goes the opposite way as well, is therefore the larger base is the more stable base. And again, a more stable base is a weaker base. Uh, now, if we make a comparison across the same row in the periodic table, in the same row, they all are very similar in size. And as a result, there's something else that has a, more, a greater precedence, and that's electronegativity. So and it turns out, if you have a base, the more electronegative the atom, the closer it's going to pull those valence electrons towards its nucleus, making them more stable and less reactive. And so in general, in the same period on the periodic table, the same row, we're going to have the more electronegative the atom, the weaker the base, and the more stable it is. And vice versa, therefore, as it gets less stable, the opposite direction, that's where you'd have the stronger base. So again, the more stable base is the weaker base, so the less stable base is the stronger base. That's the atom rule. Let's take a look at a couple of comparisons here. So we want to select the more stable and weaker base in each pair. And in this case, we're just going to follow that atom rule. And here, the basic atom is oxygen versus sulfur. And if we look, uh, the more stable base is the one lower on the periodic table, and as sulfur is lower than oxygen, then the base with sulfur acting as the base is going to be the more stable and weaker base. The one with oxygen would therefore be the less stable and stronger base. So next comparison in the chain is comparing a base that has oxygen acting as the base versus nitrogen acting as the base. And we see this is going to be about electronegativity here, and as oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen, that's going to be the more stable base. And again, the more stable base is the weaker base, So, which is what we're asked to circle in this pair. So nitrogen, therefore, would be the less stable and stronger base had we been asked exactly the opposite question. That's the atom rule. So it's when you, you always want to try the atom rule first. It's when there's no difference in the, the basic atom that you've got to move down the chain and go next to the resonance rule. Let's take a look. So the next factor after the atom rule is resonance, next in order of importance for stabilizing a conjugate base. Uh, and in this case, I've got three conjugate bases here listed. Uh, this one has no resonance, negative charges on an oxygen. And the next one, the negative charge is actually shared between two oxygens by resonance. And finally, in the third one, the negative charge is shared between three different oxygen atoms by resonance. And in this case, the greater number of atoms you share that negative charge and the more electronegative they are, uh, the more stable it becomes and it becomes a weaker base. So out of these three, this last one represented by three resonance structures sharing the negative charge on three oxygen atoms is by far the most stable of the three bases listed here and therefore the weakest of the three bases listed there. The top one would have been the strongest base having no resonance stabilization whatsoever. But if you notice, the only reason we would have gone to this resonance rule is because in all three cases, the basic atom, the atom acting as the base, was oxygen for all three. And so the atom rule would have not allowed us to distinguish a single thing. That's why we would have moved on to this resonance rule, and that's where we would have seen this first difference. So the idea is that delocalization of the electrons lowers the energy of those electrons, making them more stable and less reactive, i.e. a weaker base. So if you use the atom rule and there's no difference between your bases, and then you move on to the resonance rule and there's still no difference between your bases, the next rule you would approach looking at is called induction, or sometimes the inductive effect. And the idea is that electron withdrawing groups uh, can pull electrons towards them, pulling electrons away from the base and making the base more stable. So in this case, it's not through resonance that we're spreading the, uh, you know, the electrons around the atom, but we're spreading them around through the bonds, through just a difference in electronegativity and things of this sort. Uh, so in this case, we take a, a look at a couple examples here. So these first two examples, 
in the comparison. So we'd start with our atom rule. Well, in this case, the basic atom is an oxygen in both cases. Then we move on to the resonance rule, and we can see that these are the conjugate bases of carboxylic acids. We call them carboxylates. And both of them, by resonance, they'd have both two resonance structures. Both would share the negative charge on two oxygen atoms, and there's still no difference. So then we'd move on to the inductive effect. So in this case, the inductive effect is going to be decided by this chlorine right here. And the idea is that that chlorine's electronegative, and he's going to pull electrons away from this carbon atom right here. That's going to make that carbon partially positive. So he'll pull electrons away from this carbon right here. That make him a little partially positive. So he's going to pull electrons away from this carbon right here, making him a little partially positive. And finally, he'll pull electrons away from the oxygens, making them less negative. And if we make them less negative, we're making them more stable, lower energy, uh, and weaker bases, as the case is. So in this case, this atom with the chlorine is the more stable and weaker base. That's the one we're being asked to pick here. Uh, so just that electronegative chlorine atom near the basic atoms stabilize a little bit, making it weaker. In the next example, these both have a chlorine, and it's all about proximity. So it turns out, generally, there's an exception to this, but generally, the closer the electronegative atom is to the atoms acting as a base, or in this case, atom or atoms acting as the base, uh, the more stabilizing of an impact it's going to have. So in this case, we see that this chlorine is one, two, three, and then four bonds away from the oxygens. This one's just one, two, three bonds away from the oxygens. And so this chlorine's gonna have more of a stabilizing effect uh, on those oxygens, the negative charge. There's gonna be more negative charge pulled away from those oxygens. You can envision, you know, what if I had a hundred carbon long chain and then I had a chlorine at the end? Uh, those oxygens wouldn't even know that chlorine existed. So uh, you go to the ris ridiculous, absurd example there to the extreme, and you can see that, okay, proximity totally plays a role. The closer the electronegative atom is, uh, to the actual atoms acting as the base and the more stabilizing effect it can have. So here it's the second one that's the weaker and more stable base. A couple more comparisons to look at here. So first one is this, and again, we'd first again start with our atom rule, and it's on oxygen versus oxygen. We look at residents, and they both have two resonant structures sharing the negative charge on two oxygens. And so we'd move on to that inductive effect, and now the difference would be having a chlorine or having a fluorine, and they're exactly the same distance away. And this inductive effect is based purely on your ability to pull electrons away from the oxygens. And the more electronegative atom simply does a better job. And so fluorine's more electronegative than chlorine, and so this is the lower energy, weaker, more stable base. Finally, last comparison, and this just simply revolves around the fact that one fluorine is not as good as two. So two fluorines are gonna pull electrons even more so away from this carbon, giving it even greater partial positive charge, causing it to pull electrons, which eventually will pull electrons away from the oxygens, making them less negative. So multiple electronegative atoms is better than only one. General story here. And so this second one is also the weaker, more stable base with the lower energy electrons. Last but not least here is the orbitals rule. And the orbitals rule is not one you're likely to use too often. Uh, oftentimes, uh, you're going to distinguish between a couple of bases, either based on the atom rule, the resonance rule, or the induction rule. It's only every once in a while to really come down to the orbitals rule here. But the idea is that if your atom rule doesn't give you a difference, your, uh, your resonance rule doesn't give you a difference, your induction rule doesn't give you a difference, then you move on to orbitals. And so the idea is this. Uh, if we compare these three right here, we have carbon acting as the base, carbon acting as the base, and carbon acting as the base, and the atom rule does us no good. Uh, none of these three compounds have resonance either, so the resonance rule doesn't do anything for it. Uh, there's also no electronegative atoms nearby to help stabilize these carbon atoms, uh, so induction doesn't do us any good. Uh, and so it comes down to orbitals, and the difference here is that uh, this carbon's sp hybridized, this one's sp2 hybridized, this one's sp3 hybridized. For an sp hybrid orbital, we say that it has 50 percent s character for an sp2 that's one third so 33 percent s character and then for the sp3 it's one in four orbitals so 25 percent s character and the reason we focus on this s character we could look at p character as well but uh, electrons in an s orbital are lower energy than a p orbital and so an sp hybrid being 50 percent s 50 percent p but greater s character will lower the energy of the electrons more than an sp2 and more than an sp3 and the idea is that this orbital on average has a, sh a shorter radius uh, 
for the electrons, uh, the sp as compared to the sp2 or sp3. And if those electrons are closer to the nucleus, they'll have lower potential energy, lower energy, we say, uh, making them more stable and less reactive as a base. So out of these three, with the greatest s character, that's going to be the weakest base because those electrons will be the most stable being closest to the nucleus. And at, down at the other end, with the lowest s character, that's going to be our strongest base. Cool, that's the orbitals rule. And again, you're not likely to have this come up all that often, uh, but just every once in a while.